Hi, this is the second video um, for creating a magazine cover, and I'm looking for an image of Emma Stone. Um, so I just wanted to point out a couple of things. So, so this one, actually, that I found, clicking on it, over here I'm going to right click and say open image a new tab. And uh, a good sign is that there is a, a zoom <laughs> zoom tool and when I zoom in on it it's very clear look how clear this image is it's lots of detail so this is the one that I'm going to save um, and I did want to point out there was another image in here that looked good but once I zoomed in um, so here it is. I'm going to open this in a new tab. And then if I zoom in on it, it looks like I can zoom in, but when I zoom in, the, the image is blurry. So if someone has um, resized it in, incorrectly, um, so that won't work for us. Okay, so and then we'll jump back into Photoshop and we'll choose File Place Embedded. And we'll go grab our grab our image and now if you remember this thing was quite large so I'm gonna go back just so we can see how big this image actually is um, it is 2800 wide. So if I move this up, so the width is as large as the Photoshop file, I'm not going to be in any problem at all. Um, notice that Photoshop, when it places it in, it places it so its longest dimension fits. Now the dimension for the height is 4200. Now I need 3100. So I'm going to be fine to. Um, expand this image now that doesn't mean everyone will everyone's image will be good to expand um, but I I've, I've double checked the size so I know it's going to be fine and I'm trying to center her head I know the L magazines as I've looked and done the research that there are um, L magazine covers where just the head and neck are shown yeah there are some that you know, show to the waist or to the chest or to the hips, but there are some where it goes all the way to the head, and that's the direction I'm going to go. Um, okay, so I'm going to hit enter or this little checkbox up here to put that in place. And for an L magazine, I should not have all these logos and things behind it. So I am going to spend a little bit of time showing you how to um, cut this figure out of the background. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is um, right now this image being placed in here is a smart object. You can tell that in the layers panel by this little icon. And that means um, the, the image uh, is um, kind of a, it's a link that's almost embedded in Photoshop. Um, we did choose place embedded. Um, to, we can't make any edits to this image itself right now. What I'm gonna, what we'll need to do to actually make changes to this image is rasterize it. So I'm gonna click, right click on the image here. Sorry, right click on this layer, image, and choose rasterize layer. Notice that little icon's gone. It's no longer a smart image, and I can start working with the pixels. Let me just show you something. If I use the brush tool, and um, I pick some color, maybe like a red. Um, I can't draw on this. Notice my cursor has this big X through it. However, if I rasterize it, then all of a sudden I, I have that opportunity. I can make edits to it. Okay, just wanted to point that out. Um, so one of my first steps here is that I'm going to um, select, do a rough selection of um, Emma Stone's head. Minus her, minus the background here. So I did accidentally grab the background. I'm holding down Alt to get rid of some of the background. 
And if I'm trying to build it up again, I'm hold, just removing Alt. Um, okay. Oops. Okay, that is not bad. Okay, so then I'm going to go up to the Select and Mask. And what that does, it brings up a whole new window in Photoshop. And I can choose what color background I want on this. I'm going to choose white just so I can really see where um, this is going. And it looks kind of terrible right now, um, to be honest. A couple of the tools up here look very familiar in Photoshop. There's a zoom tool, the hand tool, so you can move around. The lasso tool will let you um, make at and add selections to your to what we've selected here, um, similar to this paintbrush tool. So if I get a, a little paintbrush and make a line right here, we can add to it. Um, and I don't want to do that for all these hairs, and it's not going to be accurate. Um, similar to this quick selection tool, um, it'll act similar to it. Here's the tool that does all the work. And um, the, the, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get a brush, and I'm going to make the brush, some of the brush stay on the image, and then some of the brush go off the image. And it, Photoshop does its job by figuring out, and it doesn't always time, all the time do a great job, I'll just say that. But it tries to figure out what um, is part of the image and what is not. And this is kind of the best, best that it gets right now. So, um, and it's not wonderful, but it's not bad. It's not bad. You can see all the hairs are starting to show and Photoshop's doing a decent job, at least on this image, in separating the image from the background. And that's the goal of this little process that I'm showing. Now, here it gets a little bit hairy, no pun, but um, really hard to know what is foreground and background. I guess that's not might be as good as we get here. It's kind of a weird dress. Um, okay. Now, I, I know I'm not going to like that, so I'm going to try to get rid of it. Maybe with this brush tool, I hold down alt, um, Option or Alt and kind of get rid of that. And we'll see where we're at. Not bad. We can move up the opacity to kind of see how she looks on a white background. It's not perfect, but it's not bad at all. So I think I'm going to go with that one. Click OK. We get a selection. And if I use the selection mask, um, it will create a mask. And now I can put another color background on it if I want to. Um, OK. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab some, um, some color background that kind of makes sense. And I might get one that's already part of the image by clicking um, inside the image. Actually, maybe a neutral gray would work best. And um, I might do a, uh, a gradient of some kind. So I'm going to make this gradient in the background. Choose my gradient tool, and then go from there. Okay, that's light to dark, there's dark to light. Try linear. I think what my problem is right now is that I'm fighting against the, um, you can see a little halo up there. So I'm going to try to use lighter colors. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. All right, so um, now uh, I'm going to move on to um, getting the masthead in and the type in.